Hey what's going on everyone, Vasco here and Formula 1 penalties, let's talk about them. So it's been almost two weeks since we had that famous Lewis Hamilton Max Verstappen accident at Silverstone but we still haven't stopped hearing about it. So Red Bull just announced that they are going to protest the decision of the stewards to give Lewis Hamilton a 10 second time penalty on the basis that it wasn't enough, that Lewis should have had a black flag, more penalty points or a larger stop and go penalty. Now this is very uncommon for a team to question the stewards decision after the race has finished and so many days after the race has finished. So normally this happens when it comes to technical matters, so if a team thinks that some other team ran a race with an illegal part, they will protest it later, but usually when it's this driver incident and crashes, teams will just stick with the result and maybe complain a little bit and maybe complain a little bit in the day of the crash, but then generally within a few a few days people will stop talking about it and discussion will be over. But not this time, so teams actually have a 15 day window where they can summon the stewards again, so the same stewards as they were on that Grand Prix, and review the incident again and present new evidences if they have them, and this is what Red Bull is trying to do. So. They are actually going to summon the British Grand Prix stewards and trying to present them with new evidences that, that the penalty should have been bigger. And the new evidences that Red Bull is trying to present is that Lewis Hamilton never made cops so quickly as on that first lap. So they have the data, apparently they should have GPS data, that even in the overtakes to Charles Leclerc and Lando Norris and on qualifying and on a sprint race, Lewis Hamilton never made cops that quickly and on that angle. And I think that that this is new evidence that really doesn't prove anything because that's really circumstantial because okay you're trying to overtake your title rival of course you're going quicker but do you don't want to crash with them but that's beside the point I made a video already analyzing the incident step by step you can check it right here so I'm not going to go into further discussion about that one of the things that I really want to talk about is that Formula 1 penalties and I'm meaning about driver penalties and not technical penalties are decided on the moment and they have to be and in my opinion they should have a window after the race of about one hour to two hours where they can decide the penalties or else they couldn't be applied because this kind of kills the racing so we go into the Hungarian Grand Prix not knowing who actually won the British Grand Prix because the stewards could still apply a heavier penalty to Lewis Hamilton and if they do so then Charles Leclerc who was only three seconds uh, behind Lewis will actually win the race if uh, any further penalty is applied because even if it's the slightest penalty of plus 5 seconds, Lewis Hamilton will lose that win. And this is not a very good thing because as racing fans we really, we really want to know who wins in the track and if there are penalties to be applied unless it's in the last couple of laps really want to, we really want the drivers to know about that penalty and trying to overcome it. So. Finding out about the penalty with appeals after 15 days after the race is really not the correct way to do it. Especially when, let's face it, this time uh, the stewards found Lewis Hamilton to be at blame and they penalized him with 10 seconds. So the stewards already told the world that Lewis Hamilton is to blame for that incident. Whether I agree with that or not, check my latest video to find out. But they already penalized Lewis, so they already gave Red Bull the satisfaction of n of telling them you're in the right, Lewis was in the wrong, and Red Bull is still wanting more because they are honestly very angry that they lost the win, but still, the stewards have made their decision, move on and go into the next race and try to win that one cleanly. Just a quick pit stop, if you're enjoying this video and are liking this kind of Formula 1 discussion content, please consider subscribing to the channel, it helps out a lot. Now back to the video. One of the main arguments that Red Bull has been presenting has been about the money, so I understand that there's a cost cap of 135 million dollars and that if the repairs cost 1.8 million dollars, I really don't know if the repairs will cost 1.8 million dollars because recently I heard on Mist Apex podcast that former Lotus CEO Matthew Carter told us that those costs were really 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 inflated because they are taking into account the R&D costs for the car and not the part cost so it won't cost them 1.8 million dollars because they won't have to redevelop the car they will only have to build a new part so I don't really know where, the, where that number came from but even if it's 1.8 million dollars in the budget cap era teams will have to factor in these kind of crashes and 
take a bit of the budget aside in order to prevent them. So when Valtteri Bottas and Russell collided, uh, Bottas's car was in basically the same state as Max's car is, so it was destroyed. And it cost them a lot of money, but you didn't hear Mercedes complain about it and wanting Williams to pay. Of course that the team relationship there is different, but still, this is... Uh, you have a racing team and you have to take into account that the car can get damaged and that it's not the other team's job to pay for an accident that happened to your car. It's a factor of racing that when your car suffer, suffers an incident, you have to pay for it, even if it's the other team's fault and that the other team should be penalized on track and not have to pay you the money. This is how Formula 1 has worked for ages, forever really, and it's the way that makes the most sense. So I hope this doesn't change. And Red Bull has been on the other side of the coin a lot of times where uh, one of their drivers punts another driver off the track and I've never seen Red Bull offering to pay the money to that other team. So it's really a non-factor and it's something that shouldn't be taken into account and is something that shouldn't even be brought up to the discussion because it can create a lot of toxic discussion around future incidents where teams want the other team that the stewards found guilty to pay them for the crash. And if you're in motorsport, you need to factor in the costs and especially with a budget cap, you need to factor in the cost of a crash. You need to factor in that both of your cars during the season are going to have crashes and you need to factor in that into the budget, but you need to plan around those incidents because they are going to happen, especially with such a tight title fight. And the last reason that I think Red Bull shouldn't be doing this is because this is going to destabilize the team. Because think about it, Mercedes are just moving on. They have nothing to prove, nothing to defend. They won the last seven championships and they already moved on from this incident. You don't hear Lewis talking about it. You don't hear Toto talking about it. You just hear Christian Horner and Alan Marco talking about it. And this is destabilizing Red Bull from the inside because I think that they have the superior car right now and okay they lost a few points but they are probably going to win this championship if they keep going the way that they have been and they have to accept that okay we have the superior car we lost a few points but let's gain them back on track and we don't need this kind of desperate action from Red Bull in order to gain the points off track again because it's really a small difference because Lewis would only really go from P1 to P2 which is a seven point difference so it was not going to be a big difference in the championship standing. So they need to do their talking on track and really stop with this attitude because this will put the focus of the members on the team on this incident that happened almost two weeks ago and not on the next race where their focus needs to be because th this is where the points are going to be scored. And I think that we already should have moved on and going into the next race we should be talking about who is going to win the Hungarian Grand Prix and not who is going to win the British Grand Prix that already happened. So I know that this is a bit controversial of a video but I really think that penalties should not work like this and that Red Bull should not be questioning the steward's decision almost two weeks later because let's face it they can win this championship anyway. So this has been it for this video, let me know in the comments down below please what you think about the way that penalties are being handled and whether penalties should be distributed during the race or after the race and if Red Bull are doing the right decision here. So let me know what you think. So this has been it for this video, please don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye!